Hey, what's up guys? Alex here. Thank you for checking this video and welcome to this brand new series called Code Gear. In this new series, I'm gonna do mostly tutorials, but not only about web development, but all the wide aspects of developers and technology and all the things that can help you to improve your life as a web developer. So in this first episode, I'm gonna tackle a pretty annoying issue that a lot of you users have and a lot of you wrote on the comment section below. The issue is how to set up a local environment on a Windows machine. Windows is not the most friendly of the operating system when it comes to create a local environment, when it comes to install Apache, MySQL and PHP, and when it comes to actually code and do something with the machine itself. So let's take a look on how to do it. So first of all, we have to download Apache and to download Apache, we have to go to the actual website of Apache that is apache launch.com slash download. And let's download the latest version of Apache that currently is the 2.4.18. You can download the 60-bit for version or the 32-bit if your system is in 64 or 32. To check what kind of system do you have, you can right-click on the Windows icon, on the Windows menu icon, and you can click on System. In this panel, you can check if your system type is a 60-bit version operating system or a 32-bit. Mine is at 64, so I'm gonna download the 64-bit version, the file zip. After it's downloaded, we can access our download folder. We can find here the zip. Let's double click it to extract it. And inside here, you will find an Apache 24 folder. What we have to do, we have to access our PC and our C driver and copy paste the Apache 24 to the base root of our C drive. After transferring the entire folder, we have to download another important framework in order to use Apache. And this framework is Microsoft Visual C++. Let's download the latest version that is currently is the 2013. Scroll down here, select language English and click download. We want to download, of course, also in this case, the uh, version corresponded to your operating system. In my case, is the X64 because it's the 64-bit version. If you have a 32-bit uh, operating system, download the X86 version. Select here and click Next. After the download, access again your download folder and double-click on the application that you just downloaded. After the installation, we have to download another package file that is actually PHP. That is what we want to install. So let's go back on our search engine and type the URL windows.php.net slash download. PHP 7 is the current new release of PHP, but I strongly suggest you to download the PHP 5.6. It's more common and it's commonly installed in all the servers and uh, current hosting providers that are out there. So you will be able to use uh, PHP 7 in the future, of course, but for now, because we want to code something that is going to be compatible with pretty much everywhere, I suggest you to stick with the version 5. I'm going to go with the 64-bit version and download the zip file. Also in this case, after downloading, access the download folder, open the zip file and create a folder inside your C drive called PHP. New folder PHP. Access this newly generated folder and inside here let's extract all the files inside our recently downloaded zip file. After copying all the file, let's go back in our C folder and let's access the Apache 2024 folder that we previously moved from the zip file. Let's access the folder conf and let's edit this httpd.conf file. We can simply open it with a notepad, it's going to be more than enough to edit this file. Let's scroll down to the bottom of this file that it's quite long and let's add the current lines. 
load capital M module PHP 5 underscore module space double quote C column slash PHP 2 point recently generated folder PHP 5 Apache 2 underscore 4 dot DLL on another line let's add handler application forward slash x dash httpd slash dash php space dot php let's put a comment with a hashtag symbol to configure the path the path to php dot init configuration file of php and my php any or oh, i i <laughs> dear it's gonna be equal to capital c column forward slash php be careful when you're writing this code because all any single error mistake any single typo could completely destroy and make your apache server not usable so be careful for any typo so php5 underscore module has to be one single word load module php5 let's check back if you brought everything correctly yeah looks good let's save this file let's search inside this file for the text directory index and let's replace the index.html to index dot php so we're gonna say to apache that our first file we want it to be a php file and not an html file while we access our local host to test let's save it now let's search for server name and as you notice here the server name variable is commented so we have to uncomment the variable and let's change it this is gonna be the fake URL that we're gonna type in our browser to access the server name we don't want to use example.com but we want to use just a simple localhost and save the file now we have to launch the command line tool by typing in the search bar of Cortana CMD we're gonna have a list of results and the first one is the run command instead of hitting enter we want to hit Control shift and enter and we're gonna prompt with the usual uh, really annoying prompt command that has us if we want to launch the common tool as an administrator we have to hit yes in order to install some specific software we need to run this as an administrator now we have to write this following script c column backward slash apache 24 to access our folder backward slash bin backward slash httpd space dash k space install and hit enter oh sorry that's a typo uh it's a column not if the installation doesn't run properly and you get prompt with an error of a missing DLL, I suggest you to download the 2015 version of Visual Studio C++ from the Microsoft website. This should solve any issues. So now we have to configure a bunch of environment and variable. To do that, we have to right click on the Windows button. Let's click on System. Let's click on advanced system settings and inside the advanced tab down below here there's a button called environment and variables. Let's click and hit and inside the system variables let's scroll down and let's search for the path system variable. Let's double click here to head it and let's add a bunch of variables. So the first one we have to add C column backward slash Apache 24 
let's write capital C should work is e also with lowercase but better always put capital to avoid any problem and the other one is C column backward slash Apache 24 backward slash bin and let's add also capital C column backward slash PHP and just to be sure, let's put PHP before Apache 24 and Apache 24 bin. Let's click OK, OK, and close this section. Now we can check if Apache settings are OK, and we can check if all the servers was set it up properly. So we can type C column backward slash Apache Apache 24 backward slash bin backward slash http d space dash capital s and hit enter now we see as a result we have a virtual host configuration with our settings and we have a bunch of settings defined with all our custom option from our apache 24 folder so we have the confirmation that our server is running and it's working now we have to edit a little bit some php settings to in order to tell apache which php settings we want to add let's access our folder structure Let's go in our PC folder, C drive, our PHP folder, and let's scroll down and let's search for a file called php.ini-development. We can rename this file by removing development and the dash, so it's gonna be php.ini. We're gonna prompt with a rename confirmation. Let's click yes. Let's open this file and we have to uncomment a bunch of sections. So first, let's search for extension dash dir. And we have to uncomment the extension dir equal ext. So we can uncomment it by removing the semicolon at the beginning. The other thing we have to uncomment, we have to comment the MySQL models. So let's search again for php underscore mysql dot dll and here we can uncomment this extension and we can uncomment the mysql i dot dll that is another extension of mysql that most likely we're gonna use with php Save the changes. Let's go back in our command line and let's go back in the root folder by typing cd and double dot to go back one folder. And when we are in our c root, let's type cd php to access the php folder. And now here we can type php dash m to see all the list of modules that have been, are being loaded so everything is working properly for now after we did all of these i suggest you to restart your machine and be sure that apache automatically starts at the beginning and everything set it up properly after this you can open the your browser and type in the url bar local host we have the confirmation that our server is working because it's loading the local host and it's showing all the files that we have in the index of our local host. But where this folder is, so to access this folder, we can open our uh, folder inspector inside the PC folder, C, where the operating system is Apache 24, HD docs, and here we can find the index.html file. So this is the folder, the directory where Apache is accessing while we type localhost in the URL. Just to check if PHP is working and it's properly configured, let's create a new file. Right click new. Let's create a text document. We're gonna replace this and let's call it info.php. We're gonna ask if we wanna rename the file extension. Let's click yes. Let's open this file with your code editor, your IDE, or even with the notepad. It's fine, we don't need to do anything uh, crazy here. And uh, let's open the 
PHP tags. And let's write inside PHP info brackets and semicolon at the end. Save this file, close it. Let's refresh this page. Let's click on info.php and because we use that code from PHP to print all the information, we're gonna have this nice table with all the information of our PHP version. So we downloaded version 5.6.16 and here we have the list of all the modules that we activated, all the options that we can use and all the information of our local host and if our PHP section is actually working. Now we have to download and install MySQL in our machine. So let's search for MySQL. Go into the download section. Let's scroll down until the uh, GPL, the open source edition, the community edition, and let's click on community GPL download link. Let's click on the first download for the MySQL community server. And let's download the MSI installer. After the download, let's double click on the MSI file and let's follow the instruction for the standard installation. In the setup file window, just click custom and you will be able to select all the options that we want. We don't need to install a bunch of different things. We just need the MySQL server. So let's select the MySQL server. Let's move it to the product feature that we want to install. Select the version related to your operating system. In my, in my case, is the 64-bit version. And we don't need anything else. Let's click on advanced option and let's change the installation directory. By default, the software is going to install everything inside programs file, but we want to actually create a folder and we want to move everything in the base C directory. We avoid to put everything inside the programs folder because this could create some uh, authorization issue, some permission issue, and we want to avoid that. So let's click OK. Let's click Next. And let's click Execute to install MySQL. So that's pretty much it for today. We saw how to install a local environment on Windows. Now you're pretty set to go to install whatever application you want. You have everything you need to configure a local environment, install an application, start coding your own awesome app. So thank you guys for watching and as usual, happy coding.